Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and welcome to Dispatch 2 for our CES 2022 coverage. I am here at the home base because I am recovering from a COVID infection. I'm doing a lot better than I was yesterday, so things are on the upswing for me. And producer Jake went to Las Vegas on our behalf to find all the cool stuff he can over at the show because the show is going on in person. Let's check in with Jake real quick and see how things are going on the ground. All right, so Jake is joining us live, sort of recorded live from Las Vegas at the convention center. You just got dropped off by the bus. Uh, what's it looking like there today, Jake? Yeah, I just got dropped off. I'm over at the Central All Hall area here. And to my surprise, there's actually a fair amount of people walking around. I hopped inside there and grabbed a quick bite to eat, and it was probably the longest Starbucks line I've ever seen in my life. So there are people here. Uh, that's <laughs> Good, for sure. so there is a show. <laughs> Wait, you yes, know what's funny? Yes. It is, imagine it like it is now, but with 200,000 people, because that's what it's usually like. You, can, you can't even dream of getting a Starbucks uh, uh, at the I Starbucks know. there. It's insane. It's crazy. There still are people here for sure. There's, there's big lines. There's a little bit of a line getting in. It wasn't too bad, but, you know, probably waited around like 10 people in front of me to get in through security, that sort of a thing. And right. um, I don't know what time people usually start flowing in, but um, I don't know if that was a media only entrance or what, but uh, there are people here. That's for sure. What's nice about this smaller show is that it's manageable. So uh, what you're doing today is going through at least two or three convention halls. Usually we would do one hall per day because the show was that big. Um, so it is a lot smaller, but I think we will find something uh, for tomorrow's dispatch. What did you do last night? Last night I went over to Pepcom. We did a walk around there. It was very cool. They had a big giant ice sculpture as soon as you walk in and they had the uh, Back to the Future, uh, what do they call it there? The uh, DeLorean. The DeLorean, yes, I just spaced out there. But yes, they had the DeLorean itself there, which is very cool to check out. I sat in it and uh, got a picture of it for myself. It was just always cool to see. Good. Well, you know cool. what we're going to yeah. do? Um, you got to get to work. So what we're going to do on my end is uh, I'm going to take the 20 gigabytes of video you sent me and uh, share with everybody what you found last night. And then for tomorrow's dispatch, we're going to see what you found today. Uh, so good luck out there. And then you've got another thing tonight. So you're going to be pretty busy today. Yeah, busy day today and busy day tomorrow, but that's what I'm here for. I'm all for it. Love walking around and covering as much as we can. Well, it kills me not to be there. I am still in isolation, but feeling better by the minute. And uh, definitely next year, we're both going. So <laughs> good luck. Uh, have some fun over at Sierra Space. We're going to check out their mini space shuttle, a real one, uh, and a lot of other cool stuff. So have at it and uh, have a good, uh, good show today. All right, great. Thanks. Feel well soon. So another big thank you to Jake for taking on this entire show by himself. And what we're going to look at now are some of the things that he found at the Pepcom event last night. Now, Pepcom is one of my favorite events of CES because they typically have several hundred companies in a single room. A lot of the companies don't actually exhibit on the floor. So Pepcom is often your only opportunity to see what they are offering at the show in person. And this, of course, was not as big as it usually is, but there was some good stuff nonetheless. Let's take a look. All right, first up here, we've got something called the Ape Man Seeker Bike Safety Camera. This will connect to both the front and back of your bike if you buy two of them. And it will put a little GoPro-like camera in the middle of that light bar there. And it will record everything going on behind you in addition to projecting all of that to a dashboard app that runs on your phone. So you can see what's going on behind you. And then if you stop, it will have a virtual brake light that will illuminate when you are slowing down to let drivers behind you know that you're slowing down. And when the uh, sun goes down, it will turn on that light and blink it automatically as a safety light. So a neat little product that's pretty simple, but I think can provide some safety on the road. Now, Anchor was there, and they had a lot of neat stuff to look at. We're going to start with the Eufy dual doorbell camera. This is a doorbell camera that has two cameras on board, a 2K camera on the top and a 1080p camera on the lower side of it. And that 1080p camera covers the ground. So if somebody drops a package off, you can actually see the package on the ground in addition to who brought it there and, of course, who might be taking it from your porch if they decide to steal it. This is a battery doorbell, but it can also be wired into doorbell wiring. And it does not require a subscription, but you do need their base station to record the clips from it. And this dials in with some of the other Eufy products that Anchor manufactures. 
And another Eufy product I thought was pretty cool, this is their all-in-one garage control. It is a camera that you mount in your garage inside of it, and this device can control your garage doors in addition to recording who comes in after the door opens or closes. So it's a neat way to make your garage doors smarter without having to replace your garage door openers. Now, Anchor is also introducing a new Nebula projector. This is the Cosmos. It's going to be available in 4K and 1080p versions. This one is powered by a laser and is significantly brighter than the prior ones that we've looked at. That's been my biggest gripe with these Nebula projectors. They're very convenient, but not very bright. You've got to have a really dark room for them to work. This new one is bright enough that if you have a well-lit room, you should still be able to get a very good image on a wall or projection screen. I'm sure it's going to cost a lot more money. There is a 4K version and a 1080p version that they'll be rolling out. And like the prior Nebula projectors, these are going to start on crowdfunding. I believe Kickstarter uh, will have these on January 11th. They're self-contained like the other Nebula projectors with the Android TV inside along with speakers. And I'm going to probably put in for the 1080p one if it's not too unreasonably priced because I am very curious to see how bright it really is. And I think this could be a real winner of a projector for people that are looking for something portable and bright that they can take with them wherever they go. And one last thing at the anchor table that I thought was worth talking about, nothing exciting here, but this is called their Powerhouse 100. And this is a 100 watt charger that has two USB-C and one USB-A port. If you're like me and you often have to charge three devices when you're out on the road, it's nice to get something like this that can adequately power all of them in one unit. So I think I might be picking up one of these at some point in the near future for future travel if I can ever get out of the house. And there was another video doorbell at the show that was of interest. This one from Belkin's Wemo brand. This is their smart video doorbell. This one will only work with Apple HomeKit and you have to have an iCloud Plus subscription to use it but it's going to integrate with iCloud Plus if you're paying for any of their subscription tiers. And this will even work on their 99 cent a month tier. And it'll store your video in Apple's cloud and of course deliver notifications to you. And everything will be integrated into the HomeKit app as opposed to something coming from Belkin. Uh, it does have to though be hardwired into your home. There is not a battery option available. It has a 170 degree field of view and does daytime and night vision like most doorbells do. Now this next one's a little bit hard to visualize, but it's called Panzer Glass Graphic Paper, and it is a screen protector for the iPad that turns your iPad screen into a more textured surface, so when you're writing with the Apple Pencil, it feels more like a pen on paper versus a Apple Pencil on some smooth glass. It does matte out the finish of the display a bit when the screen protector is attached, but Jake thought it felt pretty natural as he was writing on it, and he wanted to share that with all of you. And over at the OWC table, they had this monster. This is called the Excelsior 8M2. This is an eight blade NVMe storage enclosure that connects directly to a PCI slot on your motherboard. It is PCIe 4 compatible. And when you've got it loaded up with drives, it can deliver up to 26 gigabytes of data transfer per second. Uh, provided it is on a PCIe 4 motherboard. It also supports PCIe 3, and on that one you'll get about 12 gigabytes per second of data or so. So very robust storage capacity here. Uh, you can buy it without any storage on it at all for about 800 bucks and add your own drives, or they can sell you one pre-configured, which will vary based on the capacity. Now, OWC also had their mini stack STX at the show. This is pretty neat. Now, this is a Thunderbolt hub. We've been starting to see these make their way out into the marketplace. So when you plug this into a Thunderbolt port, you can plug in three devices into the STX and share that Thunderbolt bandwidth. But this also has internal storage. So you can put in a regular desktop spinning hard drive into its SATA slot and an NVMe at the same time. So you could have high capacity storage in one thing and then high performance storage in the other all on the same device and the form factor is identical to a Mac Mini so you could stack it right underneath a Mac Mini if you have one of those but it's also compatible with any device that has a Thunderbolt port on board. And Philips was there with a new sound bar called the Fidelio. This supports Atmos sound. It has 15 drivers on board along with a built-in subwoofer. It has 310 watts of power and has dual HDMI inputs. 
Uh, the soundbar by itself is about $800. I'd like to hear what it sounds like because Sennheiser had a very similar one that sounded awesome that was almost three times the price. So I'm curious to see how this might stack up to it. And they have other additional speaker options for it too. So if you want more bass, they have a 200 watt subwoofer you can add to the mix. Uh, that costs another 600 bucks. And then they have these little portable surround sound satellite speakers that can connect wirelessly to it for about $300 each. And those can work right in the same room that you're in, but you can also place them in other parts of the home as well. Now we've covered portable displays in the past and Jake stumbled across this one at the View Sonic table called the VX1755. This is for gamers. It is 17 inches, it's 144 hertz. It supports AMD FreeSync Premium and it's running at a 1080p resolution. Now like other portable displays, you can run the whole thing off of a single cable. It can draw power and video from the computer you're connecting it to, but it also has an HDMI input so you can use it with a game console so long as you have a USB power source for the display. Like other portable displays, it's not very bright, only about 250 nits or so, but it is something you could bring with an Xbox somewhere and start playing some games provided you've got power uh, for that Xbox while you're out on the road. Now Otterbox was there and they had a bunch of stuff at their table, a lot of new phone chargers actually. Uh, this charger though looked the most interesting to me, which is a Qi charger that doubles as a phone stand and the charger has a built-in battery so it's portable. That was pretty cool. They were also showing off their Otter Plus Pop phone cases. These are available for a bunch of different phones and they have an integrated pop socket in them and when you pop the pop socket back in, it's flush to the back of the case so the phone can sit flat on a table, but then you can extend out that pop socket and get all of the goodness that comes with having a pop socket on the back of your phone. And you can also change out the top, they said, if you wanted a different look. Now, as many of you know, I have two young daughters and I thought this easy grab case from Otterbox was pretty cool. It's a protective case for an iPad, of course, but it also has a neat stand on the back. So that stand can hold the iPad up if you wanted to put it up on a table or something. Uh, you can take the stand off and they have a nice big grip on the back that the kid can hold on to when they're walking around with it. And then if you get in the car, when you reattach the stand, the stand will allow you to hang it from the back of a car seat. So when the kid's in the car in the back seat, you can hang the iPad off the back of your driver or passenger seat and they can watch something hands-free while you're going about your way. And if you are a fan of the Xbox cloud gaming service and have an iPhone, they have a MagSafe compatible phone mount for an Xbox controller. And we're gonna get one in and see how it works because I'm always looking for some of these ways to interface with the Xbox cloud gaming service. And this might be one of the easiest ways to do it because you just have to snap your phone onto it. And Canon had something rather expensive if you're into VR video. This is a dual fisheye lens that works with their EOS R5 camera body. Now the R5 will record 8K video. And what this lens will do is project two images onto its sensor. And when you're doing VR video, you really need a very high resolution sensor to get it right because you are having to basically de-distort the image so that somebody can actually look at it within a headset. And the higher resolution sensor you're working with, the better. Now that R5 camera body, I think is about four or $5,000 plus the cost of the lens, but it will deliver, I think for professionals, a really nice 180 VR image. Now this next product is for people that are concerned their smartphones might be spying on them. It's from a company called Posio. And when you place your phone inside of the Posio, it will charge via the Qi wireless charging standard, but your phone's microphones are going to get flooded with sub-audible sounds that drown out anything else in the room. So you can't hear these sounds coming out of the charger, but the microphone can. And when it's in there, uh, you will not be able to issue a Siri or a Google Assistant command because the microphone can't hear anything else. And then if you want to issue a voice command, the charger itself will accept voice commands through its always listening microphone. So you can then have Siri or the Google Assistant do something for you, but it will only turn off that protection for 30 seconds before it automatically switches back on. The charger though does not connect to the internet. So even though it is always listening, it's not connected to anything. They also make a version for smart speakers from Amazon and Google as well. So a big thank you to producer Jake for collecting all of this footage for us. He is busy right now on the show floor finding more stuff to share with you. And then he's got another event tonight and then another full day on the show floor tomorrow. 
So we should get another two videos, I think, from Jake this year. So stay tuned. A lot more to come. I am feeling a lot better today than I even was yesterday. So I'm definitely on the mend. And hopefully by the end of the week, I'll sound a little bit more normal than I do at the moment. So uh, all is good. And I hope you all are staying safe and healthy as well. And we'll see you on the next Dispatch. Until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Hot Sauce and Video Games, Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Tom Albrecht, Thomas Anfang, Jim Tannis, and Handheld Obsession. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.